have been pretty right. good on the ice. What do you think? No, I, I think so too. And I, th- I, I think some guys are just natural athletes, right? Yeah. And I, and I think yeah, he's he's the guy who kind of raises to the occasion. Even they look at look at Roadhouse, where he's doing all the Tai Chi and Kung Fu stuff. Like he's a physical guy. Yeah. And, and again, you, you forget how like in shape Swayze was. The the Chippendale skit with uh, him and Chris Farley. <laughs> It always goes back to that for me. It, it always does. But he was like he was like a, a ripped dude. You know, he wasn't like huge like Schwarzenegger, but he was like he was definitely cut. I think him and, and Keanu offered a nice and credit Bigelow for Point Break. They offered a nice alternative to the action hero at the time. Absolutely, it, absolutely. Uh, I mean, I guess Hong Kong cinema they they had their action. You know, they didn't have the big burly dudes running around, so they were ahead of that. But we yeah. weren't really getting those movies in the late eighties, nineties. So I really and if you did it was like taped off somebody else's satellite dish. Like it was like almost like underground tape trading for like kung fu movies, yeah, right? You're, yeah, you're watching hard boiled on uh you know some VHS tape that you just watch <laughs> or some Jackie Chan flick. But you know, this is random, but but Keanu right. Reeves was in speed. When I saw him in speed yes. in what, ninety four, I yeah. I couldn't express it because I was twelve. But I just felt this is this is and Jeff Daniels was a cop. I remember just thinking to myself, yeah. this is refreshing. This is different. Does that, does that make sense, watching Speed? And I felt that same way with Swayze, too, watching his action movies. I just felt, hey, this guy, he can do it. I don't need a big... Yeah. yeah like, there was something, I guess, more human with their characters, if that makes sense. Well, again, it's... it's it's. I felt... Rep- not that I'm Keanu Reeves, but I felt represented on as a kid. I'm like, oh, he's not the biggest guy in the fight. But he's he's doing it, and it's, it's like I, I can get behind that, right? Like I'm never I'm never going to be Schwarzenegger, but I could be Keanu. You're not going to be carrying logs on your shoulder in Commando. Oh, that Commando movie, man! Everything about that was just like the best. I wrote an article. <laughs> I, wrote, I wrote an article, and I think I cast man. I think I said like sixteen hundred. Either I did the math on how many bullets missed him, and I. Th- it's on movie some of the flicks if you want to look it up. I think I think it's either I want to say like 6000. So what I did was I analyzed every gun that the henchman had and then I looked online to reference what they had. Then I looked at the clips mm-hmm. and then I figured out how soon they died while shooting and I assumed they all had full clips when they started shooting. So I estimated all the bullets I think it was 1600 bullets flew past him. That's that's an incredible math equation. That's like on SAT Test like how many bullets per second? It's fantastic. And I did the math. The I researched everything. I, <laughs> the oh. first time I saw Commando, I woke up early to watch Saturday morning cartoons, and then but I got up earlier than normal. And then on TBS was Commando, but it was just the last. So it was I turned it on and it was him shooting up the like the guards in the the lattice work in the garden. <laughs> And then, so it was him blowing some people up, stabbing with the pitchfork, and then the last fight between him and Bennett. So it was maybe the last 10 minutes of the movie. And I was just like, I was like, what is this? <laughs> but all I knew was it had Schwarzenegger in it. That's like all I, so I was like, mom, we got to go the, and rent the Schwarzenegger movie. It's like incredible. And so I just rented a, like at least six movies until I found it. Like I rented R- Raw Deal and Red Heat. And like, I think I even rented twins. Cause I was like, I don't know, but I was like, again, 10, 11 years old. I was like, I got him. And eventually I found it and I was like, this movie is it. But it was, it was a long, a long, hard uh, journey to find commando. It was like my lost movie for a couple weeks. Oh, I love this story. Yeah. I mean, that movie, yeah. that movie is who wins in a fight, Bennett from commando or young blood fight, fist fight on ice. End of the movie or beginning of the movie. End of the movie. I'd say young blood. Cause he had that training from his dad. Yeah, his dad. I like his dad. His dad was a hockey player. He was the consultant on the movie, which I kind of love. But yeah, the, the the actor for the dad quit, and they're like, "Oh, you can do it." Oh, he did a good job. I liked him out there. He felt authentic. Yeah, Uncle Owen. That's what. That's what I would call Uncle him. Owen. But Bennett, he right. he. Okay, I've watched Arnold Schwarzenegger kill many people. I have never seen someone take it to Arnold Schwarzenegger like Bennett did in Commando. And, and yeah, weirdly go. out of shape, Bennett. Someone, the stunt coordinator on that movie, called him a sock stuffed with marshmallows. Yeah, like he he was very unintimidating. Yeah, I think and it was the vest. Even yeah, the vest wouldn't fit him because he was supposed to get in yeah. shape and he didn't. <laughs> well, you, when I guess when you you're nine, I'm probably ten watching it. We're not thinking about that at the time, so we probably saw the knife tricks 
and the fingerless gloves yep. and the mesh. And we're just like, man, this guy's legit. <laughs> so no word of a lie. When I was describing, because I go to them, I'm like, I need this Arnold Schwarzenegger movie to like our local video store. And they're like, what's it? I was like, he's Schwarzenegger and he's shooting a bunch of people. That's all I know. And what did it? What actually, I said to the guy working at the counter when he's like, I know what movie you're watching. As I said, I think he fights the guy from Queen at the end. <laughs> Because he kind of looked like Freddie Mercury from that from his music video. I bet that guy was happy, right? Did the he guy laugh? Like, uh, I, he did. He's like, I know what movie you're talking about now. Because again, and he, he had like Conan. that. <laughs> oh, imagine that. It hands me Conan. No, no, he he got, he got it right. But yeah, like it was. It, he did not look intimidating in that movie, but for some reason, and I think that made me hate him more. Because I'm like, you shouldn't be doing this well against Schwarzenegger. Yep. He, I mean, they were – so you know that scene, you know when wrestlers like Macho Man used to do this with Ric Flair where they lock hands and then they have to – Yeah, the collar like, the collar will tie up. Yeah, and then – well, don't they like have to like hurt each other's hands? So they put each other's hands up in the air and they do the finger, magic fingers. Then they interlock hands yep. and then they like have to turn the hands upside down. Then it was trying to do that Absolutely. with Arnold Schwarzenegger. And I was watching yeah. it recently. I'm like, I really – I know it's not going to happen, but I hope they do this in the middle of this movie. <laughs> That's it, it was it was bizarre, um, but almost as bizarre as a hockey game is over. You've won. Let's fight anyways. Yeah, he j he just said no. Three seconds left. We're up three two. He that was a nice penalty he scored by the way. So he yeah he's like let's just do it. I do. Do right, you know what I do like? All right, how about this? We got a lot more to talk about this movie. We got, let's talk about the big fight. Let's do more. Let's take a break. Let's regroup. And uh, when we come back, we'll talk about the big fight. How's that sound? Sounds great. Welcome back to movies, films, and flicks. And right now, you you're dressed like Racky, and I'm dressed like Young Blood. And you know, it took us a couple months to get all the gear. We're in full hockey pads right now. And we're going to talk about this final fight. How's that sound? It sound it sounds great. Now, Mark, as a kid, yeah, did you did you do a lot of road hockey? N no, I I look at skates and I fall. So we did. Okay. We did. I played soccer. Uh, I also played a lot of football in lots. Like, you, you know, when you're a kid, you see abandoned lot and all the kids go together and play football. So I was basically yeah. basketball, football. I I went to one roller skating party. I'm just not a – I couldn't do it. Not not me. What about you? Um, so by necessity, I had to as a kid. Like I wasn't I'm not a – I'm not a huge hockey fan. Like it's it's amazing that I love hockey movies as much as I do. But sports movies have a formula that works. Right, you're yeah. like they, they you're kind of by the numbers, but you watch it because it's great, anyways. Um, but not a not a big big hockey fan, not a big big hockey player. Um, but by default, that's just what all the kids in the neighborhood did. So you either sat at home alone or you went and played hockey with people. Um, actually, I tried to really get into hockey one year just to impress a girl. When I was in grade eight, I was like, I'm gonna make Pam Evans fall in love with me because I'm gonna get super into into hockey. And so I watched like every Toronto Maple Leaf game that year. And that was the year they made it to like the final or the semifinals with LA Kings and got beat out. And it was like, I remember just investing so much time into being a hockey fan that year. And at the end of the season, I was like, oh, they didn't win. I don't know. What, what, what did I what was, what was my year for? <laughs> and, and the girl was like, every boy is a hockey fan. So like, you're not standing out by being a hockey fan. So that didn't, didn't work either. Um, <laughs> but anyways. Wait, she said, how old were you? I was in grade seven or eight. I, that's a very smart thing to say to somebody. Listen, all the boys like hockey. You know, that yeah, makes you like different exactly. when you don't like it. Does that stick with you for exactly. the rest of your life? A hundred percent. Because <laughs> I, 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 people ask me, like, even now, like, hockey in Canada is huge, Mark. Yeah. Huge. So even at my current church, like, two weeks away, I guess, is when the Leafs got beat out of the playoffs. I, I, I only know that because everyone around me is like, that's all they talk about. We're like, oh, the game, blah, blah, the game. Like, we'll be at band practice, and guys will be, like, checking the scores on their phone the whole time. Like, it's a big deal. And so they're like, oh, do you, do you like, watch hockey? I'm like, the last hockey game I watched was in 1994 to impress Pam Evans, and it didn't work. I played NHLPA like 93 with Pavel Bury on the Canucks. That was how far my hockey knowledge went. So even that Christmas, when my parents were like, what do you want for Christmas this year? I was like, NHL 95 for Sega Genesis. Because, again, we talked about how expensive video games were. 
So now he's going to get one, maybe two. And I wasted one of them on a hockey game to impress a girl. Jeez. And it's such bad logic to be like, hey, check out this game I got from my Genesis. Like a girl would be impressed with that. Yeah, so she's like, like, that's... So first you tell me that you like hockey. You don't like hockey, so you're you're unique. And then you tell me you do like hockey. Now you want me to play video games. Right. And so I was just like, I'm just going to be me. I'm going to go buy my Venom hat. And that's uh, <laughs> that's gonna that's the end of that one. Well, you could make heads um, bleed, though. So that's good. Exactly. I exactly. love that game. Make somebody's head bleed. I was good at fighting. I used the Vancouver Canucks. I had the same move that so I scored I got, every time. I got really good at the game, and I'll say that I didn't do anything for the girls, but all of a sudden, guys were like, I was the only guy in town that had 95. <laughs> it was like the new one, so all of a sudden, I was having like Genesis hockey parties, and I was like, oh, this is fun. I met a whole bunch of new friends, but none, none of them were, were Pam Evans, that's for sure. <laughs> no, uh, but when we went... Oh, sorry, go. I'm sorry. I was going to say, when we went to go play road hockey, though, it wasn't just go play road hockey. We'd go out... We'd throw our sticks in the middle in a pile, and then someone would put a blindfold on. They'd throw sticks to the left and right to see what team you're on. And then you would call out who you're going to be. People like, oh, I'm going to be Wendell Clark. I'm Wayne Gretzky. I'm... And I remember, like, I would always be like, I'm going to be Youngblood. Um, and people were like, what? I'm like, he's from a movie because no one else had seen the movie because it was rated <laughs> hard R. But I was like, I don't, I don't really care about real hockey players. I'm going to be a fictional hockey player. Nice. So you're Youngblood out there. Yeah, I was Youngblood and up. I mean, he was good. He had speed, and he learned how to fight. He was a total package. He he he, he was the anti Doug Glatt, right? He could do yeah. everything but fight, and Doug Glatt could only fight. I, I want to watch a goon again. Now, um, I did do a lot of research about this movie. I read a cool oral history. I did a bunch of fun stuff, and I learned that the hockey okay. scenes for Young Blood were shot at three Toronto rinks over the summer of '84. Uh, they they learned that filming hockey is difficult. You need to coordinate players. Navigate expensive cameras around the ice and have enough people in the stands to make it look like a real game. And so this brought back some great memories for me. Also, the DP on this movie went on to shoot Mighty Ducks 2 because he knew so much about shooting hockey from this movie. So they learned about right. how it was really tough to navigate cameras around. And they actually dropped some really cool facts. One day, so th I, this is insane. We were determined to break the record for most shots in a day. We did 128 shots over 14 hours. So during these hockey games, Whoa. all these shots, 128. That was awesome. And that must have been a crazy day. But I learned something really fun because I've had to do jobs like this before. And they said, we had around 100 extras every day. We jammed together for tight stuff around the benches on both teams. But when we got to the skating, we'd see this whole side of the arena, which was empty. 100 people wouldn't fill it. You'd need 400 or more. So the prop guys, Wardrobe and myself, built these scarecrows out of wooden T-shaped frames with a styrofoam head, painted flesh color. We put a shirt or jacket or whatever on it, and the sleeves would be safety pinned to the sleeves of the extras. So when one person waved or shook his arms, the scarecrow people would do the same thing. It worked great. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah, I read an oral history. It was on a hockey site. And, no, it made me so happy to read, because I, you know, I've had to do productions where I have to fill, I have to make it look like a church is full with 20 people. So you have to strategically right. like layer people. So when you have a shot, there's just a ton of people there. And if you paid attention during the movie, you're like that person's sitting in eight different seats. Or I've had to right. make a, a street look like a New York city street, an entire square block with 40 cabs, which is impossible. So you just got to really learn some creative ways to fill up the traffic. And so reading this, that made me so happy to kind of do that. So I liked all the production type stuff. And um, I guess one time Rob Lowe came in the set and he was having all these people tie his skates for him and everyone razzed him so hard the next day that he was doing it himself. Uh, they, they, they said that they just partied a lot, had a good time. They said Keanu just hung out with everybody and was super cool. They said uh, Swayze was awesome. They said they hung out with him a lot. So I don't know. It was, it was fun but, hearing about the behind the scenes shots. None of these guys were really stars yet, were they? This was was this pr this was a year before and Steel Dawn. Yeah. So I think I think Swayze had done Red Dawn and The Outsiders, but he hadn't really broke through yet. Those were both kind of ensemble casts. And I think this was Keanu's second screen appearance. He was in that um, diving movie before the the swimming movie, whatever that was. Um, but it, again, it wasn't huge. And I think this was like I think him. Rob Lowe and Patrick Swayze were all kind of starting out right now. They weren't they weren't ever recognizable, I don't think, yet. This movie made sense to be in. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. like, it, 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 the casting was smart. And the guy who directed it, he did Hot Dog the Movie and another one. 
Also, look him up, Peter Markle, M-A-R-K-L-E, Peter. He has directed yep. every 